Hello friends, this video limits and derivatives part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 12. In this example, we have to find the value of a and b where the function is given f is equal to a plus b for x is less than 1, is equal to 4 for x equal to 1 and b minus ax for x is less than 1. Also, we are told that this limit of x tends to 1 of fx is equal to f. So that means we can say that for fx, the left hand limit is equal to the right hand limit is equal to 1. Correct? This is what we can say that the right hand limit of this function at x is equal to 1 is equal to the left hand limit of this function at x is equal to 1 is equal to 1. So first let's find the left hand limit. Or right hand limit. So this right hand limit x is tending to 1 plus. So that is we can say that limit of x tends to 1 plus of fx. So 1 plus is this this function we'll use is b minus a into 1 that is b minus h d. Similarly, right hand limit for the left hand limit for this function will be this will be in this case we use this function because this is less than 1 this will be a plus b into 1 and that will be a plus b. This is the equation. Correct? And value of f1, so value of f of 1 is nothing but 4. That is the equation. So all these 1, 2 and 3 are equal. So we can say that b minus a is equal to a plus b is equal to 4. So we have this thing. This is the equation. Now we will take these two. These two will take, so what we get is b minus a is equal to a plus b, b we cancel or we get 2a is equal to 0 or a is equal to 0. So we have got the value of a. Now we will use this two equation. So here it says a plus b is equal to 4. a is already 0, we know that 0 plus b is equal to 4. So we can say that b is equal to 4. So we have two values, b is equal to 4 and a is equal to 0. That's all. That's very simple. We were told that the left hand limit and the right hand limit and the value of the function at f is equal to 1 are equal. So we have found the values of left hand limit, right hand limit and f of 1 and we have equated to get the answer. In this example, we have to, we, we are told there is a function whose value is x minus a1 into x minus a2 into x minus a3 into x minus a4 goes to x minus a n. And we have to find the value of this function limit of x where x is changing to a1. To do that, we'll just put x equal to a1 and we'll see if it is not infinite, then that is the value. So we'll say that limit of x a1 of x. We'll try first f of a1. So this becomes a1 minus a1 into a1 minus a2 dot 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 a1 minus a1. And this becomes 0 because this is 0. So this is a valid value. So we can say that f of a1 or limit of f function where x tends to a1 is zero. That is the answer. This is the answer. Also we have to find the limit of this function where x tends to a. Now the second part, limit of this function where x tends to a. What we can do here is we'll again put the value of x as a and we will see if this becomes finite or not or if so this becomes nothing but we will we'll try with f of a this is nothing but a minus a1 x1 into a minus a2 into a minus a3 or not a minus a so we see that this value is finite because a is not equal to a1 a2 a3 so we can say that this is the value and this is the answer. So we can say that limit of fx extends to a is nothing but a minus a1 into a minus a2 into a minus a3 dot 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 a minus a2. So if you see this question looks complex, it looks very big question. It's a very simple question I think. See in very the very first step we do is we First, try to put the value. For example, limit of x tends to a will try to put the value of x equal to a in the function. And if you see if it is finite, that means that is the answer. So here we have when we have put x equal to a, 
we have found that the value came out to base zero as a finite value, and when we have put the value of x equal to a, we also find that the value came out to be finite. So that is the answer. So we did manipulate our equation. Here we have to find the values of a for which this limit f x extends to a exists for this function. So we have three options. One is a is a is equal to zero, a is greater than zero, and a is less than zero. So you can have three values. So first we'll try to check whether for a is greater than because this function is of this form a is zero greater than zero less than zero. That means this function breaks at zero. So we'll try to find the value whether the uh, limit exists for a at this point. So first a is equal to zero. So for a is equal to zero, if you see the left limit, left limit is x tends to a minus or a tends to zero minus. Sorry. X tends to zero minus. X tends to zero minus. What we get is this becomes we we'll use this equation. So this becomes zero mod plus one. That is one. So in the right limit, if you see, this will be x tends to zero plus of f x. This will become mod of zero minus which is minus. So we see left limit and right limit are not same. Are not same. So we can say that at x is equal to zero, or at a is equal to zero, this for this function, this limit doesn't exist because when I say a is equal to zero, the left limit and right limit is not same. Now, case two. A is equal to zero. This is a is equal to zero. So for this case, the left limit that is x tends to a plus because a is greater than zero, a minus. So here we'll use this equation only because this is always greater than zero. So this becomes mod of a minus one. Correct? This becomes a minus one. Similarly, right limit. For x tends to a plus, will also be will use the same equation only because here a is greater than zero, right? So this will become a minus one. So this becomes a minus one. So we see that both are same, correct? So we can say that limit x tends to a f x for a is greater than zero exists. Similarly, for a is less than zero, and we want to find the left limit x is greater than Left pointing to a minus. We have to use this equation because a is now less than zero. So this becomes mod of a plus one, and that is a plus one. So the right limit, if you want to find, that becomes x tends to a plus. So here also we use the same equation, right? So this becomes a plus one. So we see that the values are same. So we can say that at x is equal to less than zero, also the limit exists. So we can say that for all values of a except a is equal to zero, the limit exists. Correct? What we have done, we have seen that this equation breaks at x equal to zero. So we have got three conditions: a is equal to zero, less than zero, and greater than zero and less than zero. Then we found that at, at if you take a is equal to zero, in that case. This becomes zero because this is a. So left limit and right limit is not same. But when you assume a is greater than zero, then in that case left limit and right limit are same. When you assume a is less than zero, they are also left limit and right limit are same. Thus we can say that for this equation, the limit exists for all the values of a except x equal to zero. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos. Try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.